Financial Review members wish to debate is the Financial Review of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade. Will members please turn to the Foreign Affairs, Defence and Trade Committee's report. The question is that the report of the Foreign Affairs, Defence and Trade Committee on the 2009-10 Financial Review of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade be noted. Mr uh, Chairman. Keith Locke. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. The situation in the Middle East uh, is now central to the considerations in the Foreign Affairs, Defence and Trade uh, Select Committee and was among the topics addressed uh, in the financial review which we are debating today. We have been inspired by the success of the Egyptian and Tunisian people in toppling their dictators and we were hoping that the Libyan people would soon prevail over the Gaddafi regime. However, as we know, the regime has fought back and was making advances, prompting calls for an internationally imposed no-fly zone to neutralise Gaddafi's air force, which was bombing rebel forces. However, the proposal for a uh, no-fly zone uh, is only one element uh, in the resolution recently passed uh, by the UN Security Council. The motion had a very loose wording, allowing member states to, quote, take all necessary measures to protect civilians, end quote, uh, in Libya. So far, the uh, coalition powers have uh, not only bombed anti-aircraft ba uh, batteries, uh, but also Gaddafi's tanks and troops and even Gaddafi's compound in Tripoli. Uh, British Defence Secretary Liam Fox has not ruled out Gaddafi himself being a target. Five important Security Council members, Germany, Brazil, India, China and Russia, didn't support the UN resolution. They are reluctant to support military intervention in Libya. And the Greens share their concerns. While we fully identify with the democratic forces in Libya we don't w and don't wish to see them crushed, we see a lot of problems with the military intervention as it is evolving right now. There will be many civilian casualties resulting from the air attacks on government facilities in the cities of Libya. Uh, this has been the case in all previous air assaults uh, by Western powers in places like Belgrade, Baghdad, Baghdad and Kabul. We are also uh, looking at more than coalition uh, uh, air operations. It is a military intervention that could involve foreign forces on the ground, even though the UN resolution prohibits a, quote, foreign occupation force, end quote, in Libya. We read in this morning's New Zealand Herald that, quote, coalition commanders argued that a ground intervention is not the same as an occupation and that this form of military action must remain a viable option if Gaddafi stays in power, end quote. Quotes. In other words, regime change is on the agenda, as it was in Iraq, a war that New Zealand stayed out, stayed out of. And we know well the problem with the Iraqi regime change when controlled by foreign forces, as opposed to the... Um, uh, more uh, orderly transition that's currently taking place in Egypt, which is being driven by domestic forces, the people uh, and institutions of Egypt itself. It is also possible that the attacks from foreign forces could actually strengthen the dictator Gaddafi's base of support as he pushes the message to Libyans that the attacks are coming from Western powers who have been traditionally uh, seen to be hostile to Arab causes in Palestine and elsewhere. Related to this, it could be more difficult for the democratic forces to get ordinary Libyans involved in their struggle, partic particularly in the capital Tripoli, if the regime can portray the democratic forces as agents of the foreign invaders. The intervention also takes place against the background of hypocrisy uh, from the Western powers involved. For the last few years, those same countries have been good mates with the dictator Gaddafi, praising him and selling him the very weapons that he is now using against his own people. The fact that Libya had oil was justification enough, they uh, felt. 
Uh, and uh, they also said that he had a uh, stable government, uh, and that was a plus to them, even though that stability was enforced uh, by com a complete clampdown on anyone who dissented against Gaddafi. Uh, and, of course, the same uh, countries involved in the air attacks at the moment uh, backed a range of dictators across the Middle East, from Mubarak in Egypt to Ben Ali in Tunisia to the kingdoms in the Gulf. And even today, there is hypocrisy with the same governments taking action against Gaddafi's forces, not being particularly worried about the Saudi Arabian forces entering Bahrain to crush the democratic movement there, with many people being killed. Uh, John Hayes. Mr Chairman, it's really interesting that people can find clouds even on a sunny day. And, I, and I'm interested in the comments made in the House earlier this afternoon by Gareth Hughes, the Green Member, and uh, Keith Locke, who's just spoken now. Mr Speaker, the issue in the Middle East is water shortage. It goes right across North Africa, right down through the Middle East, as well as poverty, decades of injustice, mass unemployment, rapid population growth, and these things all put pressure on food prices, and that is underpinning the instability in this part of the world. Mr Chair, the Middle East is hyper-arid. The underground water resources are disappearing. Population will double to 600 million in the next 40 years, and climate change is going to increase temperatures. So we're dealing in that part of the world with political dynamite. So I say good on the Minister of Foreign Affairs for opening embassies in Kabul and in, in Abu Dhabi, because he is in touch with reality. The issue in, is water. Abu Dhabi has been growing underground storage tanks to store 26 million cubic metres of desalinated water. That will represent a 90-day reserve. The UN estimates in this country that we could actually sustain a population of about 48 billion based on the amount of water that falls in this country. The Arab countries are as sensitive to water as Australia is to floods. And this is the paradox. As Arab countries depend on increasing oil prices, that in turn is going to increase all the energy prices here. Sorry to interrupt to... the honourable member. The time has come for me to leave the, leave the chair. This debate is interrupted. I shall resume the chair at 7.30.